Well, good evening, folks. It's The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza in downtown Bethlehem. It is the 24th of October, Sunday evening. A lot to talk about today. We'll see actually who hangs on to the end of these videos as we talk about our winter snowfall outlook. I'm sure that'll keep folks on a little bit longer than, than normal. Uh, here last week, real quick, uh, recap of uh, the world trends here. Now, this is a big map or retail trends, temperature trends versus last year. Uh, so here in the U.S., we're about 1.4 warmer than a year ago, warmest in four years, 11th hottest in 36 years, so above average national temperatures across the U.S. 67% drier than a year ago, driest in eight years, six driest in 36, below average in that front. Even though we had some snow in the Rocky Mountains, we're still 98% low snow, 98% less snowfall than last year, least in three years, 15th least in 36 years. Up in Canada, pretty hot, 10.1 uh, warmer than last year, uh, warmest in four years, so pretty warm across the Canada. Uh, U.K., a little bit warmer, warmest in four years. Europe warmer than last year. Um, over in Russia, again, started a warmer trend here, now warmer than last year. China cold. China's the coldest in 19 years, much below average there. Down under in Australia, uh, their spring, uh, uh, a little bit cooler, but coolest in five years. Still above average, but coolest in five. India, cooler than last year. And down in Brazil, also pretty cold, coldest in 10 years. So much below average conditions down in Brazil for, again, their spring conditions. World overall, again, uh, I think the warmer, a little bit warmer than last year and driest in six years. Maps inset left are the trends versus average. Looking at this week here, again, hard to believe, the last week of October, but uh, pretty much in the history books, uh, hot again, 8.3 Fahrenheit, warmer than last year, warmest in five years, sixth warmest in 36 years, so much above average temperatures, especially hot there from Texas into the plains and the central heartland, and you see that map inset left, trends versus last year, very, very, very warm compared to a year ago. So this is the end of the Q3 for retailers and suppliers, some of our big clients. Um, not a good end. They'd love to see, you know, really cold, wet, snowy weather and just uh, don't really have that on a national scale. It is 46% wet in last year. Again, getting that very, very heavy rain contributing to that in the in the west. California, they'll take it. Uh, Northern California, very, very heavy rain here, over five plus inches of rain. Uh, some mountain snow, kind of a little bit milder system here. Uh, even the northeast could get in on some heavy rain this week as well. So those two things add up. Second wettest in 36 years, so much above average precip on that front. We'll go through our six-day snowfall maps. Again, sorry to say that S word again, but we're going to start to say that here in the uh, going forward, uh, so we'll just run through the six-day forecast here for today uh, into Monday. Uh, these are usually ending about 8 o'clock Eastern time, uh, these totals. So it's from an 8 p.m. tonight till about 8 p.m. the next day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So again, not much. Again, a little system here through the early part of the week, Monday, Tuesday, in the northern Rocky Mountains, central Rocky Mountains, and then kind of fizzles here. The uh, total snowfall for the six-day period here for the rest of this week uh, looks to be, uh, again, heavy there in the Sierras and uh, parts of the northern Rocky Mountains. We did promise some uh, snowfall outlook here. Again, we've produced this, uh, oh, about nine, ten months ago. So, again, our, our process is more statistics and math. Climate cycle approach, uh, 24 climate cycles. So La Nina is just one of dozens that we would factor. Um, but, again, this was produced months ago uh, for our big national retail-type uh, clients. So, again, here in the U.S., we're saying the snowiest winter in three years. Um, particularly concerned about December, January. I think it comes much, much earlier than last year. Really, last year, winter didn't arrive until February with polar vortex. So December, January, March, probably the big months this winter across most of the U.S. Um, January, December, January time frame actually could be the snowest for maybe even 10 years. So there's a pretty good chance we're going to see a strong polar vortex early this year, not wait until February. 18% more than a year ago, above average. Uh, the big spots, again, you see that map uh, bottom right of the trends versus average, and the map uh, upper right is the trends of snowfall trends versus last year, uh, but pretty much conveyor belt from um, where the jet stream will merge out of a La Nina pattern would be more from uh, Arkansas into the Ohio Valley into the parts of the Northeast. So really other than right here in our area in New York, we, we kind of were ground zero for some heavier snow last year. Um, this year, again, probably more of the Northeast. Northeast really didn't have a lot of snow last year, but uh, northern Northeast this year again. Uh, Arkansas to the Northeast, probably um, one of the big winners for snow this year with a with the storm track should probably set up, and uh, also the Pacific Northwest, uh, higher elevations of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, one of the, again, one of the cycles that we'll be factoring is just La Nina. This is just looking at the spring uh, La Nina index that we believe will happen by uh, spring time frame. Uh, so again, this has implications for our farmer clients uh, and uh, potentially another dry um, spring planting season in the in the Western Corn Belt. So again, uh, we think that the, the La Nina conditions will still be in the moderate to strong phase, uh, even by May time frame. So again, this is a, similar to this last year, maybe even a little bit stronger. But again, typically these La Nina patterns mean more dry uh, for much of the country. Um, so we can certainly have some drought. We think uh, the West has some hope this winter, um, probably not a ton, uh, especially the southern parts of Southern California may remain relatively dry this winter. 
But again, one of many cycles we'd factor in for the, the winter outlook. Uh, looking at next weekend, getting into 6 November, hard to believe here, but uh, 3.5 colder than last year. So a little bit of a different trend there than we've seen as of late. 12th warmest in 36 years, so still above average on a national scale, but uh, much, much colder in the west, uh, northern plains, northern Rockies, central U.S. than compared to this time last year. So that'll drive some seasonal sales. Uh, good news for our retail customers. And uh, precip, again, about 27% wetter than last year, but still six dry. So not a lot of precip out there. Um, this will be the bigger week this week, and then next week um, looks to dry out a bit. Um, start talking about snowfall here in these outlooks as well. Snowfall, at least in five years, much below average. Uh, so not a lot of snowfall out there as we go into the first part of uh, November here. So with that, folks, we hope you have a great week. Uh, we will, uh, real quick here again, just uh, the two-week aggregate for the world overall. Uh, pretty much warm, you know, see much of the world on the warm side. This map is temperature trends versus average and total precip uh, rain and snow uh, map in set left. So with that, folks, have a great week, and we will see you next week.